Is 3D scanning still as bad as it used to be? To answer this question, I will scan a huge variety of things, including my own hand, and will compare it to the first scanner I tested a few years ago. I remember that 3D scanning used to be hard, like really, really hard. You invested plenty of time and always got mediocre results. Then there were 3D scanners with a few thousand dollar price tag not really available for the makers. But there are more and more inexpensive scanners available that made me thinking, are they good? Are they usable? And most importantly, are they useful for my work, for the work of a maker? In this video, I will use a scanner called MOL from 3D Maker Pro, which was provided by the manufacturer for me to test, but I wasn't paid to say anything, so I will only tell you my honest thoughts and I will also try to keep this video kind of general about the topic of 3D scanning without too much focus on this exact model, but I will tell you what I like and what I don't like about it. A basic kit of a 3D scanner shall include the scanner, tripod, cables, sometimes a ball mount and maybe even a turntable. For this exact scanner, there are three different options to choose from and I got the middle one with the turntable. Most scanners have an external power supply, so you can't power them with a power bank or a USB from your computer. Keep that in mind, it's very important because it's quite hard to use them on the go if you want to. The first and most important thing, you need a powerful computer to use the scanner. I tried to scan things with my old MacBook Air and it didn't work smooth enough to get nice scans. Unfortunately, it was pretty laggy. So to scan on the go, you need a powerful laptop if you want to do it, or you have to travel with your desktop computer, which might be kind of hard. But there are some different models that can be, for example, connected to a smartphone. How well these work? I have no idea. I have never tested them, but I know that they do exist. Software for this scanner is called JM Studio and seems to work well both on Windows and Mac. I haven't noticed any kind of important issues, bugs or problems. It crashed only once and that was because I was also recording the screen with OBS and I ran out of disk space. So that was kind of my fault and not of the software. So other than that, it was pretty nice and smooth experience. Pretty much all the options that I would like to have there are there, and if some auto options don't work, you can always perform the task manually, so that's also nice. And there are two different modes, the normal and turntable mode, which are pretty much the same, and actually what worked best for me is to use a turntable with the normal mode and just move the scanner while scanning to get all the different perspectives, and that works really well. The turntable is not communicating with the computer, so it actually don't have to be connected to the computer. You can power it with a power bank or a brick adapter, anything you want. It does not communicate with the computer, so it is not required to connect it to the computer. I noticed that for very complex objects that you want to scan, it might be best to put them stationary on your table and then scan with a scanner instead of putting on a turntable. It's really up to you and you have to experiment to see what works and what doesn't. You can also switch between a geometry scan that scans just the shape of the object and a texture scan that also captures the information about the texture of the object. In case of this scanner, it is just black and white information, but there are other scanners that can also capture color. There is also brightness, sensitivity and details and you just need to adjust them to properly scan any object and it's just a slider, you move it to left and right and that's it. This scanner is meant to scan bigger objects, but I got nice results with objects that are rather small like this wooden dragon capsule. Wood in general is easy to scan and reflects the infrared light nicely. I might actually forgot to mention that, but usually these kind of scanners use infrared light to scan the objects so they will work even in complete darkness and visible light does not influence the result. It doesn't matter if it's daylight or complete darkness, the results should be the same. Scanning the camera was challenging because it's black, but I was able to get a nice model after aligning multiple scans. It's always a good idea to take multiple scans from different perspectives and align them to create a complete and high quality model. You can even divide bigger objects into smaller scans with some overlapping area to get better results. Recently, I have been redesigning and 3D printing this piece for my shower, so I thought maybe I could get better result with a scanner. But combination of glossy black finish and repeating pattern of the holes on this piece is like the biggest enemy of this scanner and it simply won't produce any usable results. You can use some special sprays or products to cover the piece that you want to scan, but I don't have any of that and while it would work for such a plastic piece, I would prefer not to cover my camera with that or any other expensive electronics. So in some cases, a reference picture and a good old cut design is still the best way to do it. 
The smoother the object with less details the harder it is to scan, but such a piggy bank worked great and I even tried to do the texture scan there with a very decent result. Texture scans on some scanners are black and white only, like on my scanner, but there are some scanners that can even scan color. Here is a quick break for the sponsor message because this video is sponsored by JLCMC. This is a new service launched by JLCPCB that you might recognize from my previous videos because I cooperated with them very often for PCBs for my projects. The new service is focused on mechatronics parts. It was launched two months ago, so the catalog of products is still expanding, but there is already over 1 million products conveniently divided into different categories. There are plenty of parts that are hard to buy anywhere else, and it is just so handy to have everything available in one store so that you can save quite a lot of money on shipping. I can't wait to use some of their parts in my future projects, and if you want to check out their website, there is a link in the description. Taking a look at the sponsor of the video always helps a lot and is a great way to support my work. Thank you very much and now back to 3D scanning. I had to try to scan some LEGO because I'm a fan and it worked but lacked some details. So glossy whites work okay, dark blue bricks of the LEGO 4 GT were not a problem too. Unfortunately, the LEGO tire didn't work as I was not able to match the two sides of the wheel. Maybe adding some additional reference points to the wheel could help in this case. I tried scanning some of my robots with no success. Again, combination of black elements and too many similar features were a big problem. But I see myself using scanner in some bigger robotics project in the future to design holders for the cables or perfect enclosure and some more complicated robots. It sounds like a pretty intriguing idea and just the easiest way to do it if you already have a scanner. Cordless drill was a perfect object to scan and the result was great. So in case you want to use this kind of scans as a reference to design holders or cases or even fix the tools, that could work great. Scanning PCBs could be great for case design, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get satisfying results with that. It could especially work for the PCBs that I didn't design and you know, the PCBs that you just buy online. It could be great to just scan them, put them in the CAD and then design the enclosure. Unfortunately, it doesn't work without any special spray or products. So maybe that could help. But I'm not going to give up so easily with the idea of scanning something on the go, because I think it is very important to be able to scan the big things, the things that you want to bring home with you. And would you bring your desktop computer outside? Maybe in some cases, but usually not really. I tried to scan my bike. First thing, it's very dirty. Sorry for that. And second thing, the 50% of my bike is like black. Black is very hard for the scanner. Fortunately, not impossible. For example, the steering is made of this kind of foam that is not really that reflective, so it is possible to scan it, but you need to adjust the brightness. And that made me thinking, couldn't the brightness be actually automatic? That could help quite a lot with scanning. Then I tried to scan the frame, which is pretty big and pretty smooth, so that was also challenging and pretty often the scanner was losing its position. Did it work? Kind of, but again, my computer was the biggest limitation and it didn't work as smoothly as I wanted it to. So with a more powerful computer, yes, you could easily scan the whole bike and have a digital model so that you can design your custom parts or whatever you want. There are two things I 3D printed based on the scans from the laser. The software does a good job on making the models watertight and that is very important for 3D printing, but you really need to get nice data during scanning. I printed the all because I still have the original one and the one printed after scanning with Cyclope 3D Scanner, the first scanner I used a few years ago, so we can compare the differences. The first difference is that there is definitely a lot more detail in the new model. From all sides, it resembles the original all a lot more. What is not visible is how much easier it was to scan this time. The difference is like 10 minutes of work versus 2 hours and a few different programs required to convert point of clause into an STL file. It's just so much easier now, seriously. And then I got a stupid idea. Would it be possible to scan my own hand? Assuming I would be able to keep it stationary for long enough, that should be possible. And it totally was. The result was perfect, so I decided to print it to see how it feels like to hold my hand in my hand. While it might all sound funny, imagine how useful it might be in medical application. If someone has a broken finger, you can scan his hand in a few minutes and print a perfect support to make sure that it heals properly. 
Five years, that's quite a lot of time for fast developing technology these days. And as you can see, 3D scanning has changed quite a lot. With the improvement in software, hardware, the accuracy and size of the devices, it is finally mature enough to be used by the makers all around the world. But should it be? This is something you should ask yourself. If you need really detailed models of complex parts to be used mostly as reference in your designs, then definitely such a scanner will save you a lot of time and effort. If the parts you want to scan are rather small and simple, you might get much better results by simply designing them on your own in CAD. I tried to scan a small DC motor and it was just too small for this scanner. If you are doing, for example, car renovations or you are an artist and you want to transform your physical sculptures into the digital board, then definitely using such a scanner might be highly beneficial for you. I can see myself using it in some bigger and some more complicated projects in the future, but I'm also aware of its limitations.